All right, guys. Hey, good morning. Happy fall term. Uh, sorry, got off to a slow start on uh, Monday. That was kind of a bummer. Uh, Zoom went down and we were able to go ahead and get started. Uh, but the uh, good thing about uh, the first week is that uh, the first week we don't have a ton of stuff to go in. I know how the first week is usually for students. Really, really busy with things, getting everything sorted out. So uh, it's a situation where uh, you know, we start off kind of slow. We do pick up quick. So if you're in a situation where you don't have your books, you don't have your your funds, we can talk about that as we go through. We'll go through the syllabus and uh, and uh, get that dialed in. So hopefully everybody's doing okay. Everyone's uh, maintaining their coronavirus social distance and out of the smoke. And I know there's a lot of things going on, but I am happy that you guys are here. I'm happy that you guys are are engaged and you guys are online. Um, this class is a difficult class for some. Some people, it's not that difficult. Um, but uh, what I want to do, guys, is I want to do two, uh, three things, actually. I'm going to talk a little bit about me. I'm going to talk about the class, and then we're going to get into the material, okay? So, uh, again, this is statistics. Everyone's here for Math 12 statistics. Um, you know, I'm, I, there, there's a new thing on Zoom where I have to admit each person, so i got to keep reaching to the computer to uh, admit people. Um, but uh, that's the way that goes. Um, so I'm gonna, you're gonna continue to see me reaching the computer to admit people come in. Um, I'm trying to avoid getting Zoom bombed um, at all costs. It's kind of an annoying situation. Um, so about me, uh, again, this is Math 12 Statistics. Hope everybody's here for that. Um, I've been teaching this at San Joaquin Delta College since 2005. Um, I enjoy teaching at San Joaquin Delta College. It's a lot of fun for me. I love uh, people that come to Delta College. Very cool, hardworking, blue collar people. Um, I also teach part-time at Sac State, um, and I've been teaching there since 2002, so I've been teaching there a long time as well. Um, but uh, statistics, that's, that's, that's me in a nutshell. I'm a hardworking guy. I hope you guys are hardworking as well. Um, and uh, let's just make sure that we make that happen, get that hardworking attitude, and I think everything will be good. Um, let's talk about the class. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the syllabus. So I'm going to share my screen, and if I can figure that out. I'm sure I can. And then make sure I get to the right syllabus. Here it is. All right. And share my screen. There it is. All right. So this is my screen. Um, guys, hopefully you guys can see it. Uh, I see your face, Justin. So give me a thumbs up if you can see the screen. Thank you. Appreciate it, Justin. Thank you for showing me your face, too. Um, a lot of people are like, I don't want you to see my face. Uh, you know, we got baby Yoda up here, um, so, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, it's, it's good to see you guys. I, I, I prefer that we can establish a relationship, so um, the people that show me their face, that's a good thing, that situation. Thank you. I will pop some up. Who is that? What is that? Emma. Thank you, Emma. I appreciate that, even though it's very dark. <laughs> I can't see anything in there, um, but uh, thank you for that. All right, so this is, this is the syllabus. Math 12, it's online through, through Canvas. Obviously, all of our work's done through Canvas. Uh, fall 2020, um, and uh, this is a description of the catalog. Uh, you can read that if you want. These are the court house, of course, uh, outcomes. You can read that if you want as well. Um, so what I'm more interested in, you guys, is the first thing. We do have a bunch of homework assignments. You gotta get them done, okay? Um, we have quizzes. You gotta get them done, okay? Quizzes are weekly or per module. We got some exams. Exams can be taken twice. Okay, so that's a huge, huge thing. Exams can be taken twice. If you can take an exam twice, the better value is recorded. So both of our midterms, I would recommend taking twice. You don't do well on the first one, fine. Do better on the second one. Okay. Um, I do have an error here, guys. We're not going to have three midterms this term. We're only going to have two. Um, um, I, we, well, we might have three. Let me. Do, I'm going to. Right now, I have three scheduled. But uh, the way things are going, uh, I'm not, I might reduce that down to two. So right now, we'll keep it the way it is. But if I have to make an adjustment, I will. Um, and then um, notice that, uh, guys, the final exam doesn't open up till the 14th of December. Um, so you'll have the 14th, 15th, and 16th to find a time to do that. It's a one continuous uh, uh, exam situation where you have to take one continuous period. I've got the outline for success, the due dates, all listed here. And then, of course, our grading criteria. It's all right here. Uh, notice that each midterm, 15%, there's three of them. That's 45% quizzes. We have, we have weekly discussions, homework. And the final, standard grading breakdown, DSPS, uh, regular effective contact, how I will contact you guys, and then the course summary, okay? 
So I'm gonna um, stop share just for a second. Um, I'm gonna admit Sophia and Evelyn. There we go. Emma, I can see you better. Uh, Jenilyn, good to see you. Monica, Natalie, thank you guys for showing your face. I appreciate it. It's better, it's easy to make a connection with people when I can see their face. Um, and I know some people are like in their, you know, their pajamas and like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna show my face. Totally get that, but I'm, I'm happy to see you guys. Um, so good. Um, guys, is there any questions on the syllabus? Um, I'm gonna go into how we access the homework. I think some people have some questions on how to access the homework. Um, is there any questions just on the nuts and bolts of the syllabus? You guys can just unmute yourself and ask. That's the best way to go about it. Okay, so no one has a question on the syllabus. Ah, right, good, I'm very clear today. <laughs> okay, um, so I wanna go back to sharing my screen. I wanna make sure everyone's dialed in on how to access the course content, okay? So um, share screen, go back here. Accessing the course content, guys. Um, so when you log into Canvas, everyone should be able to log into Canvas. When you log into Canvas, um, there's some good things here. One of the things I want you to know, guys, I will record the Zoom meetings. So you know, if you click on Zoom meetings, if you weren't able to make one, um, 824, the Zoom was down, obviously, we didn't have it. Uh, today's, I'll post right here, just so you know. Um, and then each week, uh, basically a week, I have modules. So this first module is the first week. Now, some modules are two weeks. As I scroll down, you can see this. So module six is two weeks. So we have two weeks of, of, of material there. Um, so that's, again, sometimes they're usually a week, a couple of them are two weeks. Um, but the first thing I want you to notice, uh, I have a link to the textbook. And um, to access a homework, you're gonna click on homework or quiz. And the way I want you to do it, guys, is I want you to go through Canvas to access. I know some people have found other ways to do it, to get to it. I don't want you to do it that way. I want you to access it this way. Now, the first time that you access a homework, you will need to register with the site. Now, what I mean by register with the site is, that means you need to put in a username, you need to put in a password, and you need to register with our partner site, Pearson. I want you to go through Canvas to get to it, okay? And uh, at that time, you can purchase access at that time. If you wanna purchase access, then if you already purchased access and you have an access code from the bookstore, you can use it there. I don't care how you do it. There is a 15-day free trial, so if you don't have money for right now, you can access the material. It's still possible to access the material right now. All you have to do is use that 15 day free trial when you're logging in. Okay. Is there any questions on that piece? Fire away if you have one. No, no one's got a question. This is going to be the quiet group, huh? I'm going to have the whole semester. It's going to be a bunch of quiet folks, isn't it? <laughs> um, I did have a question. Yes. Um, so when I was trying to register for the book, um, I mentioned something about an access code, and I don't, I don't know if I was probably looking at it wrong, but it did like prevent me from getting the book. I didn't know if there was an access code that we needed for the book to. Um, so yeah, to look at. so Natalie, great question. So the access code is something you purchase, okay? So um, oh, okay. yeah, it's something you purchase. You can either purchase it through the bookstore, um, or you can go directly through what I just showed you through Canvas and then clicking on either one of the homework links or I'm gonna share my screen again. Or you can click on over here, My Lab and Mastering. And if you click My Lab and Mastering right here, it'll say open it right here. And that's when you get that process started. Now again, if, you, if you've already bought an access code, an access code is like 25 letters. And it's like W M M S hyphen uh, W M M S. It's only four W M M M S or something that says S E C A S or something like that. And it's got 25 letters. You input that. If you don't have that access code purchased already at the bookstore, then you just, you can purchase it directly online through Pearson as you register. Okay. Does that make sense, Natalie? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. I gotta let Dan in here. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Uh, Professor Williams? Yeah. So about access code, because um, I think I ordered, my dad ordered the book on Amazon. Okay. And I was like, at first I was like kind of confused because I asked him, I was like, did they give you an access code? Because they were asking about the access code online. And I was like, because it's an e-text. And then my dad was like, no, they're going to deliver it on September.
September 3rd. And at first I was like kind of confused. Okay. I was like, yeah, totally get it. So Jill, what they're physical? delivering you, they're going to deliver you a piece of cardboard and on that it's going to have the access code on it. Does that make what? sense? Yeah. So that's what they're delivering. So for right now, um, mm -hmm. just register with the site. Go again, go to Canvas, click on My Lab and Mastering. And then there's, as you, as it says, do you have an account? If you don't have an account, then you type in a username and password you create in your email. And then it says, there's a small little print. It says 15 day free trial. Just click mm -hmm. that and allow you to access it. Okay. I did what you made me do and it worked. Oh, okay. Perfect. perfect so perfect. thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Good. Any other questions? No other questions on that. Okay. Good, um, I'm glad. So um, guys, one of the things about statistics, I just kind of want to talk just briefly about it. One of the things about statistics is that uh, it's very, very practical. There's a lot of things that we talk in here that have practicality. Um, you know, we got an election year this year, which is great for statistics because as we move along, we'll start talking about um, different processes, including, you know, sampling, including, um, finding um, proportions and using sample data to extend about populations to talk about how there's sometimes unintentional bias. And so it's a great year to be an election year um, for statistics. And guys, and with some of the stuff we do, we do a lot of probability stuff. Probabilities in everything we do. So that we take, we spend a lot of time on probability. So this is, to be honest with you, probably one of the most practical, high level practical math courses you'll ever use. Obviously the most practical math course you ever took was probably in like third grade when you learned how to add two numbers, right? That's probably the most practical. But aside from basic arithmetic, this is by far the most practical math class you'll ever take, which is a fantastic situation because, uh, you know, you guys get me and I'm a good teacher. So, <laughs> all right, well, let's get started then. If there's no more questions, I'm going to, um, I do have a PowerPoint um, because it's a lot of writing. I do have a nice eight foot by a four foot uh, whiteboard that I will use for examples when we need them. But in general, I will be using a PowerPoint. It just makes it quicker. I do, I will post the PowerPoint for you guys to access online. So if you guys want to access it, you have no problem um, looking at it. I'll try to post it before also. Um, I didn't do that today. Um, I woke up a little late. Uh, we got a new puppy. Good thing. You know, it's like, I was like, oh, you're going to be home for, you know, teaching online. We'll get a puppy. Yeah, I, I, I don't have time for a puppy. I'm going to be online. I don't want to do that. But the puppy kept us up, and, and so I was kind of brain fried this morning. So anyway, but it's a cute little eight-week-old puppy, and, and uh, it's one of these times I'll show them to you. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started, guys. Um, let's go ahead and get started with the, the content that we're going to be going through. And guys, I will have to toggle back to this screen uh, occasionally because it's tough for me to share my screen, but also admit someone who's late um in terms of uh, uh getting online all right here we go so let's do this i'm going to share my uh slideshow from current slide all right so again you don't have to write this stuff down i'm going to post this today later on today at some point so you guys have access to it but what is statistics statistics is the science of collecting organizing summarizing and analyzing information to draw conclusions or answer questions in addition, statistics is also about providing a measure of confidence in any conclusion. I'm going to give you the idea of statistics. Okay, there's two types of statistics. There's one, which is descriptive statistics. Okay, descriptive statistics means that I'm just describing things. Like when someone says, hey, what's that baseball player stats? Or what's that basketball player stats? Well, that basketball player averages 10 points per game and three rebounds and one block shot. And okay, that's his statistics. That's what a lot of people think of when they That's definitely a piece of statistics. That's descriptive statistics because I'm describing something. I'm describing something. I'm describing this guy. There's another piece of statistics, which we'll talk about a little bit later, later about the first one third of the class is descriptive statistics. And then the last two thirds is what we call inferential statistics inferential meaning i'm inferring something what am i inferring so inferential statistics means this i take some descriptive statistics about some sample and i extend and talk about what's happening with the population now i, I didn't go into that real 
in deep because I'm, I haven't talked about what a sample is and I haven't talked about what population is, but I will today. So we'll talk a little bit more about inferential statistics, but what I want you to take away from it is there's two types of statistics. Descriptive, like the back of a baseball card, right? All the statistics, the stats, if you will. And then inferential statistics. Inferentials, we're making inferences, okay? So um, one of the things that you guys have heard, I'm sure, in the news is, is big, something called big data. And data is, is information. Data is a fact. Okay, what we use, uh, what businesses use data for are basically to take information about their population from which they're selling things to, and they want to sell more stuff to you. Okay, so data is a big, big deal right now. Because with, com with computing, and being able to track people and, and their, the amount of uh, purchases they do, data is very, very important. Data varies per individual. Every person has different data, right? If I talked about you know, maybe I wanted to find out the different hair colors on people in this class. Well, like if someone's got brown, someone's got brown with highlights, someone's got blonde, someone's got dirty blonde, someone's got red, someone dyed their hair green, purple, and blue. So data varies. Okay, guys, data varies. Now I'm going to stop my share just for a second, guys. So I got to go back and make sure no one's trying to add. Okay, good. We're good. And we go back now. Okay. All right. So. Let's talk about what the difference between a population and an individual and a sample is. So a population is a group of individuals that, is, that we're thinking about studying, okay? So maybe it's the population of California we're talking about. Maybe it's the population of Stockton that we're talking about, okay? So that's a, a population to be studied. A individual is all the people within that or all the objects within that population, all right? A sample is a sub-collection of the population. So it has a bunch of individuals, but it was a sub-collection of the larger population. For example, uh, let's talk about the city of Stockton. And maybe I'm talking about what percent of the Stockton population has COVID-19, okay? Well, I'll be honest with you. Let's talk about, is it possible? Let me ask you guys, and I want an answer from some turkey in here. So one of you turkeys needs an answer. Is it possible for me to interview every single person in Stockton and ask, do you have COVID? Is that possible? Is that possible for me to? No, why, why is it not possible? Oh, Ariella, you know why. Go ahead. Why is it, why is it not possible? It's not possible because it's too many people. Yeah. And, and, and how do you contact them, right? Many. Absolutely. There's too many people. How do you contact them? Do I go out and walk with a piece of paper and a clipboard and try to find everybody? Do I go to the phone book and look down? Does everyone even have a phone? Does everyone have a cell phone? Does it ha what about the people that, that are homeless that are living in Stockton? They don't even, shoot, they, they live underneath the bridge on I, underneath I-5. How do I contact them? How do I find them? It is impossible, basically impossible and definitely impractical to find out yeah. if they survey everybody in Stockton. Almost impossible. That's why you just take a sample. Correct, correct. And so instead of that's fantastic. Okay. So and I think that was that gentleman. Was that you? Yep. Okay. okay. So good. So that's why we take samples. So instead of taking from a large population of Stockton, we say, Hey, look, let me go collect a subset of people. Maybe I collect. You know, there's I don't know. I think there's what half a million people in Stockton. I don't know how many people in Stockton. There's a lot of people in Stockton. But maybe I take. 10,000 people randomly selected throughout Stockton. And I find that, hey, of those 10,000 people randomly selected, 5,000 have COVID, okay? Half of them have COVID. I mean, I don't know what the COVID rates are on Stockton. I have no idea, I don't care. But suppose I found out in that sample of 10,000, I found out 5,000 had COVID. That's half, 50%. So I said, hey, I took a sample of 10,000. I got 50%. So it's likely, with some level of confidence, maybe I can be pretty darn confident that the whole Stockton has 50% of it uh, is gonna have COVID. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now it doesn't guarantee that it's gonna be 50%, does it? It doesn't guarantee that it's gonna be 50%, but it's gonna be pretty representative. Now, the way my analogy for this in terms of representative is the following. Okay, is it possible, well, let's talk about this. When, when you go get blood drawn, Everyone gets, everyone's had blood drawn for some reason, whether you're getting tested for a disease or, or you're getting, donating blood or whatever. 
Do they take out all your blood and test every single drop of blood from you when they when they take out blood to test for like, hey, does this person have you know diabetes? Do they take out all your blood? No, they don't take out all your blood. They take out all your blood, you die. They take out a sample of your blood. And then they take that sample of your blood and see if they have whatever antibodies in it, right? They only take out, they don't take out the, all your blood, they take out a sample of your blood. Now, is it possible? that they took out a sample of your blood and they said, hey, you've got whatever, diabetes, when in, suppose they say you don't have diabetes, when in fact you do have diabetes. Is it possible that there's just the blood they took out didn't have any of the antibodies or whatever it is for diabetes? Absolutely, it is possible. Unlikely, very unlikely, but it is possible, okay? So what I'm saying is a sample is usually pretty reflective of the population, but not always. Okay, not always, okay? So for example, here's another example of sampling. Suppose, um, suppose we want to, we, suppose we go to San Francisco, right? We're gonna to go to San Francisco, very large city, very, very blue city, very blue city in the sense that it's usually very liberal. Okay, suppose I go there and I, and I say, I wanna, I wanna take and find out if San Francisco, what, I, I wanna see, uh, you know, if, if they're going to vote for Trump, I want to see if they're going to vote for Trump. It's unlikely, in my opinion, that they vote for Trump, but maybe I, I want to go, I want to see if the city of San Francisco is going to vote for Trump. Okay, fine. I can't interview everybody in San Francisco, but one thing I could do is take a sample of people. And suppose you say, hey, I'm going to take a sample of 5,000 people in San Francisco. Okay. So you take a random sample of 5,000 people from San Francisco. Is it possible, however unlikely, that you took randomly 5,000 people from San Francisco and every single person by chance you selected from San Francisco was somebody that's in the NRA um, or somebody who you know, is a country boy that, that, that believes in you know, gun rights or something like that where they're a Trump supporter. Is it possible, however unlikely, that I took randomly 5,000 people from San Francisco and I got 5,000 to be Trump supporters? Yes, that is possible. Very unlikely that 100% of them would be Trump supporters, but it is possible. So someone could take a sample of 5,000 people and say, hey, look, San Francisco, shoot, they, they want to vote for Trump. All of them, all 5,000 say, hey, we're voting for Trump. So yeah, that means probably San Francisco is going to vote for Trump. But it is possible that you took a biased sample unintentionally. Okay? So I just kind of want to get the idea of, of the how sampling works in terms of what a sample is, and usually the characteristics of a sample reflect the characteristics of a population. Not always, but usually. And you can see that in some of our past polling in terms of, you know, if we look four years ago. Four years ago, the poll said, oh, shoot, in these states, uh, uh, Clinton's going to win. Clinton's going to win. And did she win? No. Because the polls might have taken weird sampling uh, processes that may have gotten a biased sample. Good. All right. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Okay. All right. So I talked about the difference between descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Okay. So guys, I want you to look at this. A statistic is a numerical measure based on a sample. S, S. Statistic comes from, is a sample. Okay. Statistic comes from a sample. It's a numerical summary of a sample. A parameter is the numerical summary of a population, P, P, S, S. A parameter is a numerical summary of a population, okay? So, parameter versus statistic. Suppose the percentage of all students on my campus, all students on my campus who have a job is 84.9%. That is a parameter, the 84.9%, it's a summary, it's a numerical summary. That's a parameter because it has to deal with the population. It's a summary of the population of all students on my campus, okay? But suppose I took a sample of 250 students from Delta College and I found that 86.3% have a job. That's a statistic because that numerical measure of 86.3% came from a sample, okay? All right, good. So, um, guys, we have different types. We have different types of variables. And so I'm going to classify them right now. Okay, I'm going to talk about the classifications of the variables. 
So there's qualitative variables and then there's quantitative variables. Now, I have these definitions that look really hard. What's a qualitative variable? A quality someone has, right? Like Justin has brown hair, right? That's a quality he has, right? And, you know, uh, and Monica looks like you have red. Is it red hair? Is it a little, little red? No. Uh, it's, sorry, it's the lighting behind you. Okay, good. But anyway, sorry about that. So it's different qualities of people, right? Qualities of individuals. Maybe it's not hair. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's blood type. The quality of your blood type, right? O positive, A, B, A, B. Okay, those are different political party affiliations. Those are different types of qualities. You can't add Republican plus, plus Democrat and get independent. You can't do arithmetic on qualitative variables. Quantitative variables, you can do arithmetic. If he has, if we're talking about the number of cars people have, right? I have one car, they have two cars. Can we talk about how many cars we have together? Sure, we have three cars. So in terms of how many cars you have, that could be a quantitative variable. The number of eyeballs each person has, right? So most people have two, so it would be very, very uniform uh, distribution, but in general, that's a quantitative variable. So quality, qualitative variable. Quantitative variables are come, things that have quantity to them, okay? So let's talk about it. Nationality. Nationality is a qualitative variable, right? What nationality? The number of children you have. That is a quantitative variable. Household income, quantitative variable. Level of education, whether you have high school or college, some college, college, that's a qualitative variable. And then daily intake of whole grains is a quantitative quantity, right? How many whole grains did you have? You had 10 grams of whole grains, I had 30 grams of whole grains, together we had 40, okay? That's a quantitative variable, okay? Within quantitative now, within quantitative, I have qualitative, but within quantitative, we have two subtypes. Discrete and continuous. Correct, discrete and continuous, okay? The two types that we have are discrete and continuous. Now, what is discrete and continuous? Well, discrete one is one that was countable, and a continuous one is one that's uncountable, okay? And that's kind of a weird way to think about it. But I'm going to kind of show you on the board, all right? I'm going to kind of show you the board. I'm going to stop my share just for a second, see if anybody's waiting in the weight room. No one's waiting in the weight room. Fantastic. Okay. So let me ask you guys, if, 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 uh, if I talk about the number of siblings each person has in this class, right? Someone has three. So, oh, good Lord. The pen is fired. The pen is fired. Oh, that was it. Someone has three, someone has two, someone has five, someone has zero, another person has zero. This is definitely a variable that changes, okay? But as we go through, this variable changes as we go through. Is this a finite or countable number? In other words, can you count the number of siblings someone has? Can you count? Yes, absolutely, you can count the number of siblings someone has. It's very easy, right? These are all countable numbers. And you can take these numbers, these are all finite or countable numbers. Someone could have, well, I had one student a couple years ago, she had 17 siblings. Oh, and they're all, no, no half, no, not like half this, half that. They're all full siblings, it's crazy. That's an example of a discrete variable. But then if I talk about something that could be on a continuum, on a number line, something like this, this is the number line, right? Like for example, the number of uh, grams of fiber that you ate today. Maybe you didn't, you know, I know the package says has three grams of fiber. Does it really have three grams of fiber? Or maybe it has 3.00013 grams of fiber. Or maybe it has 3.00145 or 3.00157926. So that's a number that can be on the number line. And there's an infinite number of numbers on the number line and it's uncountable. There's so many. So things that can have these large decimal representations that go forever, okay, those are the ones that are what we call continuous. Okay, so think of it like, like height, right? I say I'm 6'2", am I exactly 6 feet 2? I'm not exactly 6 feet 2, I'm 6 feet 2 plus da 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 da, right? And someone says, oh, I'm 5'9". No, you're not 5'9 exactly, you're 5'8 point da 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 da. 
So height is a continuous variable, okay? Now, if I said, how many follicles are on the top of your head? You could count those. Is it a large number? Yes, but could you count them physically? Absolutely, okay? Could you count all the different heights that you could have in the world? Someone could be 5'9", someone could be 5'9.01, someone could be 5'01. You can't count all those, there's too many, okay? So the difference between continuous and discrete is one is countable, that's discrete, and continuous is uncountable, okay? Good. So let's talk about the number of children that you have. That's a discrete variable, okay? Household income, discrete variable. You made 100,015 cents, so you made 100,016 cents. You can count those. But daily intake of whole grains, measuring grams per day, is a um, continuous variable. So we have discrete, discrete, continuous. Okay. Good. Now, we talked about how uh, variables uh, can be one of two classifications, qualitative or quantitative. But in addition, data can be qualitative or quantitative. Okay, so that's just another way of just saying, if we have variables, variables give us data, that data can be separated into either qualitative or quantitative. And once it's quantitative, it can be discrete, countable, or continuous, uncountable. Okay. All right, now I wanna talk about some different processes. I wanna talk about um, random sampling. Okay, guys, I'm gonna stop share just for a second. And I kind of alluded to it a little bit ago, the idea of random sampling. Random sampling is, is basically us doing a hat. And you have equally weighted sized billiard balls inside of the hat. And you shake that hat up and you grab them. That's random sampling. Okay, random. There's no bias to it. There's no bias to it. You just shake it up and grab it, okay? That's very, very important for us to understand, okay? That's an example of random sampling. Everything has an equally likely chance of winning, okay? Although I will say, if it's not equally sized, if these aren't equally sized, it's not random anymore. And I'm gonna give you guys a tip, okay? I'm gonna give you a tip because I'm a nice guy and I'm gonna give you guys a tip. Has anybody, anybody been to one of those crab feeds before where you're like supporting like a softball team or something like that? Anybody been to one of those? So Justin, you've been to one? Okay, good, anybody else? Emily, you've been to one? Yeah, okay. So those crab feeds for softball, my niece is a softball player. Um, and uh, so we went to a crab feed for her because they were trying to support and they get these donations and you, 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 they, they line all these donations on a table, this really long table. And uh, then they have these hats in front of them, these baskets in front of them, you buy tickets. You buy like 20 tickets for 20 bucks and you put in tickets in each one, they draw one and you win the prize, right? That's, that's kind of the way it works. And I, I love crab feeds, I love crab. And I also like, because I like to support my niece or whatever, and then I, I like the opportunity to win things. Well, the one thing I want to tell you about is they weren't taking a random sample of one ticket from those uh, hats. And the reason is, because everybody else threw their ticket in there, right? Everybody else threw their ticket in there, okay? Well, I didn't throw my ticket in there. What I did is I crumpled my ticket, then I slightly unflattened it, and then I put it back in, which means it has more surface area to grab. And I'll tell you right now, there was 20 prizes, I won three of them. I won three of them, okay? Because I skewed the odds in my favor, right? I crumpled my ticket and then I put it back in. Okay, I skewed the odds in my favor. That's not randomness in terms of it picking one. That wasn't a random sample of one because this had a higher likelihood of being picked. Okay, so that's that's my 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 advice to you guys in your next crowd feed, right? So you guys can win. <laughs> so anyway, that's an example of uh, random sampling is when everything has an equally likely chance of happening. Okay, all right, let's go back here. Now, uh, I'm gonna skip back because we're running low on time. Um, I wanna talk about a stratified sample. So uh, one, one downfall of random sampling is that it's possible, like my San Francisco example, it's possible in San Francisco, I, 
If I want to take a sample of 5,000 people, it's possible you get all people of one type. In other words, it's possible I got all Republicans randomly. That is possible. But suppose you want to avoid that case where you get something all from one type of population. Well, then you can use something called stratified sampling. Okay, it's obtained by separating the population of homogeneous non-overlapping culture. That's so confusing. Uh, strata. What is a stratified sample? The best way I have to give you an example of it is right here. Suppose we have 49 Republicans, 49 Democrats, and two independent, two independents in the United States Senate. I don't want to take a random sample of nine people. Because if I take a random sample of nine people, is it possible that I got all nine Republicans? Yes. Is it possible that if I took a random sample of nine from those uh, 100 people, I took, I got nine Democrats? Yes. I don't want to get all of one type, so I'm going to avoid that. So instead of doing that, I'm going to take a random sample of four from the Republicans, randomly take four Republicans, randomly take four Democrats, and randomly take one independent. That means I guarantee I guarantee characteristics from all the different strata, don't I? Okay, that's important, right? I want to get information and I want to make sure that I don't get all Democrats. And if I took all Democrats and they're like, hey, we need more social welfare programs or whatever. Well, that, that might not be representative of what everything happens okay, in terms of the whole population. So if you want to get characteristics of the whole population, sometimes it is important to take a stratified sample. So you get information based on all the different strata. Good. Does that make sense, guys? Like, and see how the value of it? Good. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Especially you guys that have faces out there, man. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So a systematic sample is a little bit different than a strata. Oh, did I skip one? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. A systematic sample is, is, is the easy way to do things, okay? Imagine if you had a phone book, okay? And you want it, and it's got... In, in Stockton, it's got, you know, 400,000 or whatever population in Stockton is now. I don't even know anymore. Okay, it's got a bunch of people in the Stockton area. Is it possible to say, hey, I want, if I got 400,000 and I want a sample of 10,000 people, do 400,000 divided by 10,000, and I'm going to get, uh, yeah, you know, every 400th person I'm going to take. So I'm going to take the first person, and then the 401st person, and the 801st person, and then the 1,200 first person in order. Does that make sense, guys? So I'm just taking, I'm going to take so many people, I'm going to take every 50th person in the list. That's a systematic sample, okay? And it's easy to do when you have things in a line or a row or in a list. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't guarantee you a, a unbiased sample. It's possible you get a biased sample, right? And maybe every 400 first person has a certain characteristic. But it is easy to do, and that happens a lot in sampling techniques. Think of an example of a, uh, you know, one of those conveyor belts. If you have these conveyor belts, um, they, they, they usually do every you know, 15th one, they sample to make sure it's quality control. Okay? So that happens a lot. Systematic sampling happens a lot. Okay? The last method, and I'm going to skip on how to obtain it. Uh, the last method that I want to talk about is the idea of what a cluster sample is. So a cluster sample is very, very uh, valuable. Very, very valuable. Now, the way I, I like the, to, um, to do a cluster sample is this. Suppose, suppose um, I have this school administrator example. I, I want to find out what maybe, maybe our school at Delta wants to find out how students feel about online learning. They're like, hey, I want to feel about. Now, one thing they don't want to do is they don't want to go and, and, and try to zoom, they don't want to zoom bomb, you know, 55 different people at 55 different whatever, uh, or maybe 500. They don't want to do 500 different people randomly and have to Zoom bomb in class and say, hey, what do you think about online instruction and stuff like that? They don't want to do that. It takes too much time. So instead of doing, you know, 500 people randomly, what they do is maybe they took a bunch of classes. Maybe they said, hey, look, maybe I'll just take 10 randomly selected classes that are meeting, right? There's more than 10 classes in, on campus. But if you took 10 classes each with 50 students, then you'd have your 500 people, right? So that's exactly that's an example of cluster sampling. Another example of cluster sampling might be this. Okay, um, I live in the Sacramento area. Okay, well, actually, I live past Sacramento. It's a long drive to, to Delta on a daily basis, but it's worth it. I prefer in-person instruction. But anyway, in Sacramento, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. But Sacramento is a grid system. They got A B A, A Street, B Street, C Street, D Street, you know, so forth. 
first, second, third, fourth, fifth. It's a grid. If someone wanted to survey um, people and they wanted to find out, uh, you know, what is what is what does Sacramento feel about, uh, you know, the governor moving out of the governor's mansion? You know, they want to find out about that. They're like, hey, the governor's normally living in the governor's mansion in Sacramento. Now he's he's moving away. How do you feel about that? Well, one thing they could do is they could take a random sample of 5,000 people and walk to 5,000 different locations in all of Sacramento and, and that grid system. That'd be a lot of work. Or what they could do is they could break down Sacramento into blocks, right? There's this first in, first in A Street block, second in second in A Street, third in A, fourth in A, you know what I mean? And so they're all blocks. They could take a, a sub-collection of some of the blocks. Maybe they take five blocks in all of Sacramento and just randomly five blocks and interview everybody in that block. Okay, that's an example of cluster sampling, okay? Okay, and then the last one, uh, before I get to the last one, I wanna, I wanna point this out, okay? Um, so, uh, simple random sampling, randomly taking each piece of people, okay? Cluster, or stratified sampling, stratifying these individuals in some type of strata, this type, some type of homogeneous characteristic, this time I put men and women, and then once you've stratified them, put them into this kind of characteristics, we take a sample of each one. Systematic is every third person, fourth person, whatever it is in a row. And then cluster sampling is break things up into clusters and then take all individuals within randomly selected clusters, okay? And the last one is convenience sample, okay? Convenience sampling is not a good technique to use um, you know, my wife, uh, she gets that magazine, Us Weekly. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. It's an awful magazine. It's basically all pictures. And it's on the newsstand. It's on the newsstand. It's just like, you know, gossip, celebrity stuff. And I'm like, I like to, I don't read it, but I look at it. But it's all pictures there. Anyway, so, on like the third page of this magazine, they have this picture and they say, who wore it best? And they have these, usually it's two females, and they have the same outfit on. And they say, we asked 100 people in, uh, on, uh, you know, on Wall Street or somewhere in, in, you know, in Manhattan, who wore it best? And 86% said she wore it best. Well, that's convenient, right? I'm just, hey, what do you think about uh, this person who, who's wearing it best? That's too convenient. That's not a random sample. That's not a stratified sample. That's just convenient sampling. Any type of those internet polls or phone polls on radio stations, those are convenience sample, and convenience sampling is very, very dangerous because it's convenient, it's easy, but it definitely gets a bias sample in general. Okay? It gets a bias sample in general. Okay? All right, good. Last thing I want to talk about, guys. I know I'm moving fast. I'm trying to cover what we're going to cover in two days in one. So that happens. Uh, again, Zoom was down on, on Monday. It's kind of a bummer. Um, but the last thing I want to talk about, guys, is uh, where'd it go? I lost it. Well, uh, Okay, well, anyway, I had it on there. I don't know what happened to it. Um, last thing I want to talk about is the process of statistics. Okay, and, and, and talk about how the process of statistics is, there's two different types. There's observational studies, and then there's a designed experiment. An observational study is different than a designed experiment. They sound really fancy and very similar, but they're actually quite different. What's an observational study? An observational study might be this. I'm going to observe, I'm going to observe if, and, and, and again, maybe I just interview and ask, hey, what was your diet? What was your diet? And your diet is this, and I ask another person, what's your diet? What's your diet? And I ask, maybe I ask a bunch of people, and over time, all these people have certain diets, and I found out through observation that the people that eat Mediterranean diets live longer. That's observing something and then recording it. Does that make sense? That's an observational study. That's different than this. I'm gonna take 10 babies at birth, okay? Or 100 babies at birth. And I'm only gonna, I'm gonna feed one baby for his whole life Mediterranean diet. I'm gonna feed another baby the American cheeseburger diet, right? I'm gonna feed another baby their whole life, right? You know, the Southern, you know, ribs and, and you know diet and i'm gonna take another one i'm gonna, I'm gonna have them feed them more of a east eastern uh, uh eastern food culture okay and then see what happens who lives longer 
That's a designed experiment. And again, they are eating the same diet forever. That's a design, obviously no one would ever let their babies do this, but that's an example of a design experiment. I have treatment, I have controls, okay? These are, this, and that's super important. Both pieces are super important. Treatment and controls where I'm deciding, or I'm not deciding, I'm looking at what happens based upon the treatment, given the control that I have in this experiment, okay? So those are two different things. Now, one thing I want you to notice, an observational study, like the one I said, hey, these people, these diets, tend to live longer just by looking at them. That, uh, the only thing that you can establish with an observational study is something called, excuse me, a frog in my throat. <clears throat> Okay, the only thing that you can establish when you have an observational study is something called association. Okay, you can say, hey, Mediterranean diets are associated with living longer. But in a designed experiment, you can establish something called causation. So this causes this, right? Like if you eat cheeseburgers for life, it causes colon cancer. Okay, you can establish causation, which is different than association. This is someone saying, hey, uh, you know, this is, you know, eating this is associated with heart disease versus this causes heart disease. Two completely different things. Okay? Two completely different things. Okay? Uh, I don't know what happened to my slide with that. I don't know what happened to it. I must have deleted it before I got here. But, um, guys, that's all I have for you today. Okay, I'm going to stay on for a couple minutes if you guys have any questions. Um, but uh, other than that, I will see you guys on Monday. We do have a homework due, one homework, one quiz, and a discussion. See guys, discussions are easy points. You should get the discussion points, okay? And the homework, you should you get infinite number of attempts. Just make sure that you give yourself enough time to get the homework done and 100%. And, and obviously the quizzes, you get two attempts. Best one is computed for your overall grade. I have something in my throat. Um, so guys, if you have any questions, stick around. Otherwise, I will see you on Monday, okay? Happy, happy Wednesday, have a great day. So, Professor Lane. Yes. Um, with the quizzes, how do you break the half point? Um, I'm so, could, you broke up a little bit. I'm really sorry. What did you say? Emma, you, you just uh, you, you just went out. I, I can't see you anymore either. There you are. I know. <laughs> sorry, I had to turn my Bluetooth on. So, um, with the quizzes, how do you grade the half points? So, so each, each point, each, uh, so you do get partial credit, which is good. Um, so if, if, it's, if it's a one point problem and there's five parts and you got two of them wrong, you get 0. 0.6 points out of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. okay. So do you, um, so on my quiz, I had gotten, I thought I would get more for the half points, but I still ended up getting almost the same score I got the first time. Oh, okay. Um, so I didn't know if you add the half points together or if the half points they, are officially. They should, they should be added together. So Emma, I'm going to ask you, so let me take a look at that. So can you email me a reminder? I have another class right after this, so I'm going to forget it. Can you email yeah. me? I'll take a look at it. Is that okay? Uh, email you my score? Yeah, email me. Hey, can you take a look at my quiz to see if they added it up correct? Okay, for sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else? Any other questions? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Our power is that PowerPoint you showed us going to be available to us for uh, resource? Absolutely. And I and and uh, this is who I'm trying to look through. This uh, Jas Jasper. Jasper. Okay. So Jasper, absolutely. I didn't post it today. I forgot. Sorry. Um, okay. But I, I was I was in a funk this morning. A dog kept me up. But uh, I will get it to you guys. I will get it to you guys today. I'll put it, post it in this week's module. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay. Well, uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I will see you guys on Monday. Um, Professor Williams. Oh yes. Yeah. I have a question. I was just wondering what the difference um, of a high school statistics and probability is between this class. So that's a great question. That's a fantastic question. So, um, uh, gentlemen, I, my, my son is in high school, okay? And he took, over the summer, he took uh, Delta College's statistics class. 
And it is different in some ways, but not in general. The, the content that you do in a college level is a little bit different because in high school, they might go a little slower. They might not go as more in depth. Um, you know, it just depends on your instructor. You know, it, it, in college, we're quite uniform, quite uniform since we usually teach the same content. Um, so good thing about taking this on, uh, on Delta, are, are you a high school student? No, um, I'm a freshman in college, but the thing is, when I was in junior year in the Philippines, I took statistics and probability. Okay, so yeah, so it, it, there's going to be a lot of, it depends on who your instructor was and how well they went in depth, but there's going to be a lot of overlap, a lot of overlap. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Sure. Um, it's just about uh, the scientific calculators. Do you know, like, if the math building or what going to be able to give us um, free yeah. um, calculators? So they have in the past. This is an unusual. Obviously, you know, this is unusual. There's basically no one on campus. Um, and I, I would love to tell you that, that there's a method. I can, I can reach out and, and talk to my dean to see if there, there's any method they can do to get you one. But I think it's going to be unlikely, to be honest with you, uh, okay. which is super unfortunate. I will say this, though. Um, you know, you have online resources. You could type in um, online. Just type in online calculator. And a lot of – you type that, and probably the first 10 links you get will all be sufficient to be able to do some of the things that you need to do. Um, the key thing is, um, is when we want to be able to do things efficiently. So after we learn like certain things like standard deviation and linear regression, after we figure out how to do it, you want to be able to do it quick rather than the long way. And being able to do it quick involves technology. And so you're going to want to be able to have some access to technology at some point. Um, I, I will look into and see if I can find out if my dean's going to have any um, resources, to, but I don't think so, to be honest with you. We normally do. It's just no, like our, our, our secretaries aren't even on campus. You know, it's, the campus is basically shut down 90 something percent of it's shut down um and unfortunately we don't, we don't have that right now okay thank you okay. so i did have another question professor sure. williams yeah. um so i'm not sure if anyone else was experiencing any um difficulties with the statistics graph or um being able to do the systematic sample without knowing what n was um, I know I had emailed you about it because I was having difficulty um, oh, watching that, that video. Yeah, that's, um, that's right. It wasn't playing at all for me. It was it stayed at zero the whole time and wasn't moving. So I didn't know if anyone else was experiencing that or if that was just me. I think it was just you because I went in. No one else has told me anything. I went in and it worked no problem for me. Um, let me see. Um, so one thing I can say, Emma. So what I did is I just pulled all of those videos from mm -hmm. Pearson. If you go into Pearson, the My Lab of Mastering, um, and you, you can actually access all those videos per chapter um, directly through Pearson. In fact, I didn't even pull all of them. Like some of them have, like some of the videos they have are tutorials on how to use like a TI-83 calculator, or if you want to use stack They have all kinds of videos from there. Um, you're welcome to, to, to go into to Pearson uh, to directly and access those videos. It's, I just pulled them over to make it convenient. I said, hey, these are the ones that we need, make it convenient. And if it's from some reason it's not working for you within Canvas, just go to go into My Math Lab and Mastering and uh, access it there. Right. So when I did, I did try that. Okay. Um, but when I tried logging into Pearson, it said I had to register. And yeah, I had already at, registered. I already have a, a, a username and a password. And then for me to be able okay. to register again, I guess I needed the professor no, ID. I, I don't want you to register again. <laughs> no, it's, so let's do this, okay? Let's do this. Um, Emma, let's set up a Zoom session um, and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it, okay? Uh, okay. So let's, let's set up a Zoom session. I have a class I have to teach in five minutes, um, <laughs> so, but, so I can't do it right now. Um, but right. if you finally let's set up a Zoom session where, where um, you know, we'll, you will be the host so I can see your screen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And so then, you, then I'll walk you through it as you go through. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So email me and we'll set up a time, all right? Okay. Thank you. Cool.
All right, I got to head out, guys. I got to get to my next class. It's not that far away. It's in the same room, but I got to get it dialed up. So I um, hope you guys have a great day, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay? Thanks.